Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a slightly different episode of the podcast today. Um, I had a guest not show up, a um, little bit of a scheduling conflict. Uh, at one point, we tried to record, but the sound quality was so bad um, due to some connection issues that it was completely unusable, um, and they were not able to make it to a reschedule. Um, so this is going to be a little bit different, and I think today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the show and... Um, kind of how did this start and and what is the point of this show um what am i hoping to do with it how did it get started um and and kind of a retrospective of of the past six episodes um which have gone really well but had some some growing pains to them um and i thought people might find it interesting to figure out you know how did how did how did the podcast start how did the show start um where do i see it going in the future um, so first of all, um, if people don't know, my name is Seth. Um, I'm the host, producer, creator, um, and well, pretty much it's a one man show, um, <laughs> of this show. Um, and why did I start this show? There's a couple different reasons why I started this show. The first was because I've always been really interested in, uh, voiceover work, um, the voice acting, stuff like that. And, um, as the podcast, uh, you know, uh, economy and, and sphere kind of started to become more popular and more accessible to the consumer. Um, it seemed like this was something that somebody could do to put their voice out there. Um, and it would be a fun way to kind of explore that, that vocal interest that I had. Um, also, um, I have way too many interests. Um, I have a lot of different things that I'm curious about. I like to read lots of different, uh, books and on different subjects. And I realized that there are a lot of people I know that are very interesting people and have very fascinating careers, hobbies, and interests um, that they've really pursued to a, a higher degree. So the thought occurred to me that um, I could talk to these people that I know personally and, and hear in depth what these interesting hobbies are that they have. Um, or, or careers or interests, um, everything from hip hop musicians and actresses, um, you know, park rangers, uh, fitness people, varying interests. Um, and through them, I could meet other people that would also have interesting hobbies, careers, and interests. So this idea that people were all interconnected started started to bubble in my mind a little bit, and I realized, oh, hey, this is kind of like the, the Six Degrees of Separation game or Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game that people play uh, with movies. And for those not familiar, the, the idea of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon is that any actor is associated to Kevin Bacon through at most six degrees of separation and you jump from movie to movie like this actor was in this movie with this other actor in this other movie and you continue down the line until you get to kevin bacon um so i thought this is a really interesting way to meet a lot of people that have all kinds of different life experiences um opinions hobbies and that we could really kind of highlight that you know people are fascinating people and that we are way more interconnected than we think we are. There's a lot in the news these days where, you know, everything's so decisive and people are very um, insulated in their their groups and stuff. And I wanted to highlight how people are connected to each other um, through these interesting connections and hobbies, interests, careers, whatnot. Um, so it was a the, the show was a way for me to kind of explore two different um, aspects. One was the the vocal interest that I had in in sort of the voice acting, voiceover work, um, which I, I I had no idea how to break into, and I still don't. Um, uh, and then the the desire to meet interesting people and learn from them, and to show our interconnections with each other. <clears throat> so w when did this start? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I actually thought about doing something like this maybe five years ago or more, but the, the barrier for entry was still kind of high. Um, nowadays there's so much consumer level technology that's really high end. Um, and, but it's not at that commercial price of, you know, 
fifty thousand dollars for a video camera or something now it's like five hundred dollars a thousand dollars or more depending on the quality you want um same with the mics mics used to be really expensive for quality mics not so much anymore so the barrier to entry started to fall and so i was like well maybe i can make this work <clears throat> um so i started slowly investing in some equipment um uh, not great equipment, but you know enough to get to, to, to get by and actually do the work. Um, and then kind of life, you know, got kind of crazy and stuff. And you know, I changed jobs, um, moved, and and it got kind of chaotic. And then uh, COVID hit, and now everybody's locked in their houses, um, including myself. Um, and we've got time on our hands. And it, I was like, this is probably the time to do this. Um, but I had some issues. So with COVID, um, it's hard for me to meet people uh, face to face um, until there's you know uh, widespread vac vaccinations and, and herd immunity. So my thought was, well, you know, again, technology's gotten a lot better, especially because of COVID, um, as far as the telecommuting goes. So I found some software that I could use where I could have interviews with people anywhere in the world. Um, and it would record in high quality video and audio. And I thought, great, this is a perfect way to start this. But that wasn't the original intention for the show. The original intention for the show was to have an actual in-studio guest um, and that I would convert an area into a studio, an actual sit down and have a conversation studio. That didn't happen because of COVID. And I was about to pull, you know, the, the you know, I was about to do that um, right before COVID hit. Um, and then once the lockdown happened, I'm like, I waited and I waited. And then I kind of gave up and was like, I, I don't care about it being in studio anymore. The technology is there, so we might as well just do it virtually. Um, and that comes with its pros and cons, which I will talk about later. <laughs> um, but I thought that in this episode, I would go over the last six episodes that I have done and kind of tell you what the pros and cons and the triumphs were um, and, and issues and kind of how, how did this get going? Um, and I, cause I thought maybe people might find it interesting. So <clears throat> episode one. So this was interesting. Um, this was with a, a good friend of mine, um, David Olivas, who is a hip hop musician. Um, and shout out to David for being the, my first guest. I really appreciated that. Um, so David is based out of Bremerton, Washington, I believe. Um, and he is a hip hop musician. He's performed with some pretty big names like tech nine. And as I mentioned in the, um, in the, in the podcast, in that episode, it was kind of a funny thing to see him performing with tech nine because my older brother had a poster of tech nine on his bedroom wall when we were teenagers. So it was kind of blowing my mind that this, this person that I saw on a poster when I was in, you know, was a teenager, my friend is now performing with them. Um, and, and, and is the, uh, the, the, the opening act for them basically. Um, so it's, it, it was really kind of mind blowing. Um, and he, he, he did me a favor and he actually was, um, uh, broadcasting from another studio, um, so that it could have really good sound and, and connection. The problem was that I was new to this and I figured, Hey, I'll just use what I use for work since that works well for video conferencing. So I used zoom and that was a mistake. <laughs> um, so apparently the problem with zoom from my understanding is that it is not recording locally. Um, it, it's, it's sending all this video and audio through the, the, the through the internet. So there's a bandwidth issue. So we were getting lag issues, sound issues. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't quite figured out my camera situation yet. So that kept cutting out. And I think that might've been partially due to zoom, but I'm not hundred percent sure about that. Um, but it, it was a bit of a disaster and I feel really bad. And David, if you ever want to come back on the show, I'd love to have you back on now that we've worked out some of these issues. Um, but so David, it's interesting. He has been grinding at this hip hop thing since high school. I remember him in high school, just writing 
lyrics and and talking about how badly he wanted to perform and how this was like a dream of his and i just want to tell people that if you have the passion that david has you will succeed because he has succeeded at this he is an a, a performer and he's a great performer um and in, in i know as far as in the local scene he's very well known um he also has a really good show on facebook you should check it out called the bar exam Pretty sure that's the name of it. Um, you should look it up. Um, it's with him and a co-host, and they usually have guests on, and they basically go through uh, different people's song samples. People send them in, and they review them. It's really good. It's really funny. Um, and some of the songs, I mean, you're gonna you're hearing them for the first time, basically, um, in this review, and some of them are really good, um, and they'll give a really honest critique on on what they think about it. Um, I believe it's him and a producer friend of his whose name I can't quite remember, but I'll put it in the description um, of this episode. Um, so it was it was quite the experience, this first episode. Second episode. Um, this was with somebody I know, uh, Janet Travis. Um, it was really fun to talk to her. Uh, she's an actress and a well-established one. Um, it, it it's it's interesting because i i've i've known her for a while um there's a bit of a relation there um we're related um but it was crazy to see her name on movies all of a sudden and i really wanted to talk to her about the industry and how she got into it because it's such a difficult industry to break into so that was a really enlightening conversation in in to see what her journey was to becoming an actress and now a, you know, a, a successful actress. I mean, it sounded like she right from the get go, she was killing it in her auditions and she's got these big projects coming up. Um, I'm, I'm really interested to see this animated project she's talking about where she did some voiceover work and some live action work. Um, I, I just can't remember the name, but apparently she's playing like the villain to an, a, a, like an alternate version of Amelia Earhart. Really cool. Um, and by that time I had kind of figured out the software issues. Uh, I switched to a new recording situation, uh, software. Uh, I'm now using riverside.fm and it has been phenomenally better than zoom. Um, riverside.fm basically it records locally. And so the quality is better and then it uploads. So it's not it's not constantly transferring the information over your your connection and and clogging up that bandwidth basically um so <laughs> my 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 learning curve i'm going up the learning curve basically as this is happening so um episode three um so now i'm like in my third week of of podcasting and i'm having a lot of fun uh this is the, this is one thing i gotta say is even though this is a lot of work um setting up these these guest appointments um doing the technical stuff and sometimes i have to edit the, the audio maybe a little bit of video editing although i try to keep that to a minimum because that's a lot of work um this has been a lot of fun um and i'm, I'm enjoying talking to all these people so I'm three weeks in and I, for episode three, I decide that I'm going to talk to a friend of mine, Jason Lonsberry. Jason is awesome. Um, he is a former coach of mine, um, a CrossFit coach, but he has way more experience than that. Um, he used to be a personal trainer. He's a multi-business owner. Um, and now he is the CEO of an ammunition company, uh, Apex Ammunition, who makes tungsten steel, uh, duck shot basically or bird shot i should say um and i believe they work on other um types of ammunition for hunting but it's a hunting company um so um it, by now I, I i figured out some of the connection issues and 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 the delays in virtual uh recording it's it's very difficult to talk to somebody virtually instead of in person. And uh, it's something I'm hoping that we can improve as time goes on. And maybe eventually I get like an in-person um, studio because the delay sometimes when somebody says something to me and I want to, if, if I want to interject or they want to interject into the conversation, 
um, it's it's really hard to get the timing right because there is a really really slight delay of a few a few like a second or a millisecond um, where it's, you end up interrupting each other and and that doesn't really um, go over well because you'll notice that sometimes in a few episodes I'll try to say something and they're still in the middle of their their point um, but I wanted to interject something real quick or vice versa and then both people stop very suddenly and there's just a pause because we both heard each other trying to to talk basically and nobody knows which person should go first and then eventually somebody will go oh well i'm, I'm just going to continue or i'm you know i want to make this point um and i think in person you would be able to read those cues for people better so that's something i'm hoping to, to fix in the future uh, and it's something i noticed as i was talking to janet and, and jason in episodes two and three that it's something that i'm going to have to be a little bit more aware of um, and, uh, now I try to make sure that the person has finished what they're going to say before I interject, um, which can, can be difficult on virtual because sometimes if the person's connection is really bad, there's a delay and it makes it really difficult to, uh, determine if they've finished what they're going to say and then not having a long pause afterwards, you know, if, if they're, if they finish their sentence and then there's. And then I jump in. I'm trying to avoid that um, when it's unintentional, but sometimes that's just a result of the, the delay in the, the virtual meeting that we're having to use because of COVID. Um, but uh, yeah, you should definitely check out Jason's Apex Ammunition. Um, but <laughs> it was really fun to talk to him about his, his um, experience in fitness, diet, uh, and, and, and business ventures. I mean, he's had multiple businesses. He, he's a, a fitness trainer. Um, we jokingly call him the wad father, uh, at the, uh, you know, when he was at the gym and was my coach. Um, and it's kind of an inside joke for those that aren't aware, uh, he was a CrossFit coach and in CrossFit, the wad or W O D is the workout of the day. And we kind of considered him the godfather because his, um, ability to get people to do things, that they did not think that they could physically do was amazing. It, uh, it was, I saw so many people make advancements that I, that they did not think that they were going to be able to make for years or if, at all. And they would do it in a month or two because he was able to find their weaknesses and fix them. And so the joke <laughs> became that he was the wad father, um, of CrossFit. Um, so it, it's kind of an inside joke, but it was really good to catch up with him again. And we get into detail about, you know, people and fitness. Um, like a lot of people are intimidated by, by fitness and they see like the Olympics or they see the CrossFit games or even just like a football game or, or baseball. And they think that they have to get there right away like that i mean you know it's like oh people are like oh i ran five miles and somebody might not be able to run at all and they're like well what's the point i can't even run and he did a really good job of explaining like you know you just need to do what you are able to do no matter how small that is it's something um and it's progress and it'll build on itself so it's a really interesting conversation um and you check out episode three with jason lonsbury if you want to hear more about that Episode four was with my friend, Kelsey Johnson. Um, like David, I went to high school with her. And originally, I remember she wanted to be a journalist. And then suddenly, I heard that she was a park ranger and she's giving like tours and back caves and, you know, she's out in the woods. And then the next day, she's a park ranger in the city of Seattle, which I didn't even know that park rangers could be in Seattle um in the city i mean you think of them out in the cabin in the middle of nowhere uh, but that's not always the case so <clears throat> kelsey and i talked about how she became a park ranger and what is a park ranger what do they do and what is the importance of, of being a you know of the park ranger system and of the park system in general i mean a lot of people think that there is just all these areas of land that are do not touch areas or do, you know, you know, they're just for looking at and stuff, but it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um, and Kelsey goes into detail about the importance of the park system and what exactly a park ranger does and why it's important, um, to the, the, the history and the, um, 
the legacy of the United States. Um, and uh, it, at this point in the in the podcast, you know, I'm in, I'm on episode four at this point, so it's been like a month of podcasting. And um, at this point, I've I think that I kind of hit like the technical peak, basically, um, where I've kind of figured out the majority of of the technical issues. Um, I, I actually had to learn how to do audio editing, um, which I'm still learning to do. Um, but I noticed that with uh, Jason and with Kelsey's podcast, when I listened back to the audio, um, there was a lot of echoing and, um, like artifacting, um, on, on mostly on their side, which is unavoidable because unlike here where I have this nice mic, um, they are usually using some Apple ear pod, you know, the, the, the ear pods or, you know, just a basic headset or something like that. Um, and it's not doing echo cancellation or anything like that. So sometimes I would hear like my voice uh, like a half a second before my voice actually came through because it's a weird echo plus the delay from the lag. So it was a, it's been a big learning experience for, um, for audio editing and, and, <laughs> um, I believe at this point, um, I'm pretty sure it happened with episode number three with, with Jason where my computer crashed in the middle of the podcast not a big deal because i had riverside fm and i could just restart it and it would immediately start recording again which is is an amazing feature um i could just go back on log back in the person was still in the interview room on riverside and we just resume the the upload and and the conversation nothing got missed um but it did make me realize that the computer I had was not going to cut it because it's audio and video that I'm recording. Um, I had just a cheap, like not, it was not even a Chromebook. It was, but it was that style where it was like a, a little laptop that's you mo meant mostly just for going online and looking up information. Um, it had like four gigs of Ram and, and for people that know computers, they know that it's basically nothing. Um, so as soon as I, I started doing like really intensive stuff, like, like Riverside is uploading large amounts of data. For example, I've been talking uh, now for about 20, 22 minutes. It's uploaded over a gig of information. Um, and that's because it's video high, high resolution video and audio. Um, and the, the small computer just couldn't handle it. So in between talking to Jason on episode three and episode four, I upgraded computers, which was um, a great decision because now I don't have this issue of um, running out of memory, running out of uh, processing speed, or just it crashing because it just can't handle that much computational load. Um, so that was a huge improvement. And I kind of felt like the, because of that and because I've, I've kind of figured out the Riverside um, FM, um, system that I, I kind of hit the technical peak now for talking to people, um, uh, virtually like this for the interviews, or at least I thought I had enter episode five. <laughs> so episode five was with Spencer Hill and, um, you know, he, he's a military veteran who recently retired and now he's doing, um, adventure scuba diving. Uh, he's, a I I believe he called himself a master diver. And so he's teaching other people to, to do diving and bringing them on these adventures where he's swimming with sharks and like, you know, coral, all kinds of crazy things. And I think his, his actual goal is to eventually, um, have like a YouTube channel where he is exploring all these lesser known, um, locations and, and places where people could dive. And, um, and we got into detail about, you know, what does it take to be a master diver and, uh, you know, what is he hoping to show people? Um, you know, how difficult is it? Like, how does it work? You know, getting over that intimidation of being underwater and having to breathe, like, you know, manufactured air, basically like oxygen and, and helium mixes and stuff like that. Um, but from a technical standpoint, this one was kind of difficult because, um, I, I won't say exactly where he was at, but I will say that his location was out of country and very long distance. Um, and that made it difficult. 
uh, from a technical standpoint. So I think that I, I kind of hit like a, a, a point, no matter how good my computer is, no matter how good my internet is, and no matter, no matter how good Riverside is, there is going to be a delay sometimes for long distance um, conversations, um, especially if the location they're at does not have the best internet connections. Um, so that one, the video feed was cutting out. It's still recorded, but the video feed was cutting out. And sometimes there'd be like small delays in conversation because I wouldn't hear him. Um, and then it would kick in later on. Uh, so it, it became difficult, but I think that I figured out the timing. So in the future, if I'm able to interview people from out of country or that are out of country, it'll be a lot smoother. Um, I'm hoping to talk to somebody who works in public health that lives in Sweden right now. Um, and I'm hoping that, uh, because I figured out these technical glitches that, um, and, and or limitations and timings that. I can uh, talk to that person and it'll actually work um, in a sensible way or an understandable way, I guess I should say. Um, episode six. <laughs> this was with <clears throat> another friend of mine. Um, I actually hadn't talked to them in a very long time, very, very long time. Um, but I knew that they worked in technology and they wanted to talk to me about voting and uh, digital voting. And I know this year and even <laughs> even the past few election cycles, uh, this comes up quite a bit as far as digital voting. It's, it's usually really controversial. Um, and he thought that he had a solution to this. And um, I work in tech um, and he works in tech. And I was like, this would be a great conversation to have because we both kind of know what these terms mean and what the implications are and the difficulties of, of these technologies. Um, and this turned into my first, like really long form podcast. I mean, the, the other ones up until this point, um, they averaged about 35 minutes to an hour tops. I mean, the, I mean like the first one with, with David Olivas, the, the hip hop musician was probably about 35 minutes, but I think that part of that was, I didn't know. I, I didn't know quite how to approach the, the interview process. Um, but I also feel that the zoom, um, complications and, and, and drawbacks, uh, that we were having made it so that I needed to end that early because the, the camera kept cutting out. We were having zoom issues. Sometimes it was hard to hear. So I think that one got cut the, the shortest because of that. Since then I average usually about 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour per episode of talking to somebody with, with JJ, um, and talking about digital voting, it became a two hour conversation. And I think that that was important because it is a very difficult conversation and it's very technical conversation. Um, but also, um, I, th that was for me, that was interesting and I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I can, I can see now why these conversations that say other podcasters like Joe Rogan or somebody have end up being three hour long conversations because when it's, when you're in the zone and you're talking to somebody, um, you know, especially professional to professional, um, then these conversations can become very long if they're not super formal. If, if the person is willing to just kind of, you know, spitball information back and forth with you and you know you're willing to bounce things off of each other it quickly turns into a, a long conversation and, and not such a um like scripted or uh rehearsed conversation um i mean none of these have been rehearsed uh, my show notes are terribly short um so <laughs> the way i do my show no notes normally is that i will basically sit down and write a very quick, very, very quick outline, maybe takes me five minutes of some really basic points that I want to talk to this person about. That's it. That the rest of it is just me spitballing and, and, and playing off the other person. Um, so if, if the technology continues to be good, like I'm, I've, I've really been enjoying the Riverside FM and it's making these conversations a lot easier. Um, then these conversations 
tend to get longer because I'm now not limited by the the systems crashing or um, the audio lagging and making it really difficult to have a conversation. Um, instead, it's a it's almost like we're in the studio together, going back and forth, and that results in a longer conversation. But um, it's actually really enjoyable. Like you know, you 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 would think that. Um, talking to somebody for two or three hours over a, about a podcast or something would be exhausting, but it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> um, and I could totally see how these podcast, other podcasters are having these really long form conversations. Um, so the, this, this most recent episode, um, episode seven, uh, the originally planned episode seven, I was going to talk to a real estate agent about the current state of the market, especially in the Pacific Northwest and the, the impact of, of COVID um, on the market. So for those who don't know, and I don't know how it is for the rest of the country, but in the Pacific Northwest, where this podcast is, is filmed uh, and recorded, the housing market is insane. So people are basically offering 100% cash and they're they're giving like 80 to a hundred thousand dollars over asking price. And these houses are going like, like on the market for maybe three or four days and only three or four days because they need time to, to close escrow. They have to put it up for some reason to do the cash offer. Um, so I, I appreciate the, the person trying to, to talk to me and we did try to record. We did. Um, but their connection was so bad that I basically was trying to do follow-up questions to something I couldn't hear. And I would hear it like after I asked the question. So it was, it was literally like he was four minutes behind me. Like it would just go blank. I would hear nothing. And then I would just ask my next question. And then I would hear the rest of his answer from the previous question. So. I thought about splicing it all together, what we did record, um, you know, we were recording on Riverside, so I can kind of take both um, my feed and his feed, and I could kind of try to splice it together, but it just felt that that, that wouldn't be a very natural um, conversation. It would feel very, very manufactured. Um, so instead, I decided to do this solo format and kind of tell people how has it been going so far and what are, what are my plans for this podcast in the future? So I'm curious if people would like to see more of a solo format. Um, do you like solo format? Would you like me to pick a topic? Um, like I said before, I work in technology and I know a fair bit about a, a good amount of technology. I can at least talk about it a lot. Um, but I also have a ton of other interests. Like I said, in the beginning, I'm into fitness. I'm into like biohack stuff. That stuff's kind of interesting. You know, I can talk about pretty much anything. Um, I've got way too many interests to be honest. Um, and, uh, would you like to see those, the, a solo podcast for the times that I don't have a guest or the guest cancels or can't make it? Um, I could easily fill out. A, a solo format like this and just explain something to people. Um, do you, do you want it to be educational? Do you want it to be edutainment? Like, do you want it to be kind of interesting or funny? Um, do you want to hear other types of podcasts? Like, I don't know if I want to turn this into having separate channels or, um, you know, separate podcasts, uh, but I do have other ideas that might be interesting to people. Uh, we could do a whole series on building Batman. Like, I mean, that's super nerdy, but I'm a nerd. Okay. And I'll put myself through the experiment, you know, uh, and we could have a whole series about that. And I don't know if that would be a separate podcast, a separate channel, whatever you guys let me know in the comments or email me, um, what your, what your thoughts are on this. Um, or we could do a conspiracy podcast. Just saying, I don't believe in conspiracies, but I find them hilarious. So I was thinking, Hey, what about a comedy conspiracy channel? 
kind of funny. I can have a couple people come in or virtually or in person when COVID's over and we could talk about a conspiracy and laugh about it. You know, talk about why this isn't a thing. Like, why, why doesn't this make sense? You know, where does it make sense? You know, it could get kind of, it could get hilarious. I've had conversations like this with people before. I'm pretty good at playing a devil's advocate um, position and taking the position that I don't actually believe in, but I'll argue it and it makes for some hilarious situations. Um, so please let me know what, what, what do you want to see? Um, and for the future of the show, um, you know, I, I'm really enjoying this. I'm having a blast and I just need more guests. That's, that's it. Um, I need more guests. Um, I'm working on that. If you'd like to be on the show, like if, if I know you and, and you're interested in being on the show and so we can maintain the six degrees of, of separation theme, let me know. Or if you know somebody that might be interesting, let me know, please. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of guests that I have booked. I have one more next week, I think. Um, and I'm trying to book more now. I know everybody's really busy or there's COVID situations and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm more than willing to talk to people and I'd be fascinated to hear other people's stories. Um, and I'm sure other people would love to hear your story too. Um, for the future of the show, is it always going to be virtual? I don't think so. I think once COVID is over and there's a, a, a certain degree of safety that I can count on, not just for myself, but for others, as, you know, the guests as well. I think that when, when the situation allows it, um, that an in-person studio would be a good idea, but I can't do that until COVID is over. Um, and I just need more support. Um, I need you guys to download these podcasts. I need you to like, and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, help me generate more, uh, better numbers so that I can re reinvest in the channel and actually create that, that sit down studio and, and have people over. And I think, one thing that I, I think is really good about the Riverside virtualization setup is, um, for example, the person that I'm, I want to talk to for in public health that is in, in Sweden, um, I believe it's Sweden. Um, there's no way I'm going to have be able to get them over here, um, to, to talk. Um, but I could do this virtually. So maybe it'll be like a hybrid of the two, like maybe in the future when I can actually have people in studio, the people that are local or the people that are within a certain reach where it's, it's feasible. I could have them come in to studio and do it. Um, but the people that I'd love to talk to that are in another country, you know, Sweden or like the Philippines or, you know, wherever, you know, Europe, um, I don't want to make it difficult for them to to show up or have to fly in or anything like that so i think that in those situations the virtual is the way to go in, in the, not just now but in the future um and i i know that's difficult sometimes but i think until i'm you know unless i can make this thing blow up and be huge um i don't think that i have the resources to do that um but i think the virtual resources we have will be more than enough to, to get us through that, th those kind of situations. Um, you know, I, and I would just like to, to thank everybody for your support. Um, I, this, this has been an amazing experience. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I can't believe that people are actually just watching and to hear me talk to people. Um, but this is kind of, you know, I've, I've always wanted to do something with, with voice, like, and I feel like podcast is the, is that next iteration of, of voice artists. Um, and I get to talk to all kinds of interesting people. I'm hoping to talk to a lot more interesting people. Um, and I get to share my thoughts with you guys. Um, and I just, just want to thank everybody for your support. And if you could please pass, pass the word around give people the, you know, the link to the, the podcast downloads. Um, uh, we're on, we're on Apple, we're on Google play. You know, I think it's Google podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere where you can download a podcast. We're there. Um, and we are also on YouTube. Um, six degrees of pod, um, is the channel name right now. Um, 
And please like, subscribe. It really helps me. Um, if I can get up to a certain amount, uh, then I could really start make you know making this into a, a a more viable option. Like I would have more resources. The more you guys like and subscribe, and get your friends to like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, this that, this is all I wanted to talk about in this episode. I just wanted to do like a quick retrospective on on where. Where, where did this come from? What What's my plan? Um, and where do you guys want to see the show go? Um, you know, I, I mean, I have lots of ideas, but I want to hear from you. So if you have an idea, if you have an idea for a guest, um, please uh, comment in the YouTube channel, or you can email me at six degrees of pod at gmail.com. Um, and just let me know. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> it's kind of funny The it's, it, it's interesting to, to look at the statistics for, um, this podcast. Um, I'm just starting out. I don't have a whole lot of subscribers. I mean, it's like nothing. Um, but it's interesting to see the, the, the makeup of, uh, of the, the demographics of, of, of who's watching the majority of them United States. But I just found out that I have somebody in Africa listening to me. They've downloaded like five episodes. And shout out to that guy. Shout out to that person. I don't know if it's a guy, but shout out to that person for, for downloading it. Like, that's awesome. I'm international now. It's so cool. <laughs> um, but really, everybody, thank you so much for your support. And I, I hope to keep doing this. Um, my plan now is to keep doing this weekly, at least. If I don't have a guest, I will probably just pick a topic. If you guys want to give me some topics, and I'll just do a solo style like this. Um, but uh yeah i've got lots of information to, to to go over um i've got lots of interests that i'd love to talk about <laughs> um and uh, and lots of ideas in in this head of mine so um yeah just thank thank you everybody for listening and please like subscribe promote it download it on spotify apple like let, let, let's go guys let's let's do this um so all right guys <laughs> i'll see you guys next episode bye